of National City Bank and its attendant effects in this community? Well, my answer to that one is going to be the easiest probably today and the fa quickest. As a regulator, I'm not, um, it's, I cannot comment on a specific institution or a specific deal. My question goes out to uh, basically the area of education. As I've seen, I'm part of Generation X and our ability to handle money, to save money has not been very good as we can see. Uh, if you were speaking to a uh, convention of social studies teachers, what would you like to have them tell their students about uh, such factors as savings rates, uh, interest, so that future generations would have a better financial outlook than our own? Well, you know, I'll have to start by saying it's not just your uh, generation <laughs> that, that didn't uh, do a good job of understanding um, some of these issues. You know, I think a comment that I made, I would start with the comment that I made in my remarks, and that is just as investors have to understand what they're buying, borrowers have to understand the obligations that they're getting themselves into. And I think we're going to learn through this process that you can't borrow without having had some savings. Um, and we're, we're um, involved in many efforts throughout the country, but right here in our own, our own district in um, financial education efforts. And I think you know, we're going to be stepping up those efforts just as many other organizations are, working with schools as well as with community groups um, to help people better understand um, some of these complex instruments. In fact, uh, next week on November 19th, we're holding a uh, forum, we're co-sponsoring a forum called Financial Fitness, and it's going to be held at the... Um, uh, Cleveland State University Wolstein Center and we're expecting a similar forum was held in Boston where thousands of people came to work with counselors to better understand some of their financial inst uh, situation and then we're going to hold a similar conference in Dayton uh, later on that week at Xavier University so there are a lot of effort you, you raise a good point you know we all we are all personally responsible for better understanding the financial and business decisions we make How concerned are you about the emerging needs of uh, capital from the insurance companies? Well, the, um, there are going to be, um, as we're learning, um, capital needs by many organizations, and um, and some I'm, I haven't I haven't focused particularly on some of the state of the insurance companies. My responsibility is with the banking industry, and we've been working very closely with the banking industry to um, help them understand the um, processes behind getting access to the capital that's been available through the Treasury. But um, as you've heard Secretary Paulson um, recently say, they're going to be looking at using those, those TARP monies for other uh, financial entities. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. With 48 percent of commercial bank deposits currently in the hands of the 10 largest banks in the country, and the use of TARP money to, act, to facilitate further acquisitions, does it make sense to see more and more consolidation of bank assets and deposits in fewer and fewer institutions in terms of our economy? There's, there are clearly um, some, uh, some financial, there is clearly some financial consolidation taking place. I think it's going to be important once we're through this turmoil for us to step back and look at the financial landscape in broader terms um, to to see what makes sense in terms of of the types of I, we're going to see changes in the types of uh, financial institutions that are operating in our financial markets. We're also going to see uh, changes in the types of activities those financial institutions can take place. So, I do you think it's important for us to get through this turmoil and then step back and um, and look at what type of financial structure makes sense? for the economy that we're living in today, and it's not just the U.S. economy, but the worldwide economy that we're living in today. We're, I, there are clearly a lot of lessons learned from a lot of parties that have been involved in this, uh, getting us into this financial turmoil. I think a lot of those entities are stepping back. I know the Federal Reserve is, and looking at the lessons learned through this environment. What's always um, difficult, though, is you can learn from your mistakes 
and make changes to correct the mistakes you've taken. What's difficult is to anticipate what the future crises or future mistakes are going to be and create a financial structure and a financial regulatory reform that um, addresses that future. So we're, we're going to take, I don't want us to be um, very hasty in crafting, uh, in making decisions and in, in crafting reforms. I, I really do want us to, to take the time to try to anticipate what the future financial landscape is going to look like and put together a structure and a system that will keep that system safe and sound and um, help us uh, grow our economy. That's a perfect segue to my question. Originally, uh, these funds were re uh, targeted toward uh, these toxic mortgages, and now they shifted over to investment with the banks. Did they screw that up in the beginning? Do they, do they not have it right? Ra raise my comfort that they know what they're doing and they're going in the right direction. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Jose, I'm, 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 I'm glad that you're using, you're asking, did they? Because, <laughs> <laughs> no, let me explain. It's, um, the reason I say that is that there's been a lot of confusion um, because as I pointed out in my speech, there have been a lot of activities. Some of them have come from the Federal Reserve through our lending authorities, but others have come through the Treasury. And that program was a program that was a approved by Congress and um, had given Treasury, when it was approved, broad authority to use that $700 billion. Um, what I've learned throughout this crisis, and it's not just um, whether it's this Treasury um, TARP program, but, but many of the, of the activities, is that you're making decisions based on the information you have at hand, and in principle, many of these decisions are the right decisions. What's been difficult is the implementation of a lot of the decisions, and that the implementations have become more complex. And um, so, uh, and fortunately, though, uh, you know, there's been a lot of flexibility and adaptability, and changes have been made um, when. It, it was thought that the, that the changes would, prove, would, would give us better results. And I think that's also been an important factor through this crisis. The worst thing you want to do is not do anything. Um, and, and so we have been aggressive in taking actions and modifying those actions when we thought it was appropriate. But in terms of the Treasury program, that, those are Treasury decision, decisions and not the Federal Reserve's. Hi, Sandy. Uh, question for you on the uh, so-called mark-to-market rules. Uh, many people would say that was a major cause of the uh, problem that we're faced with today uh, from the standpoint of when there's no market, <laughs> you mark things down mm -hmm. to zero very quickly. I'd be curious to hear your perspective on, on the impact that that's had on the crisis and then also on the fact that the support of the SEC right now for review and whether or not uh, mm -hmm. you have a perspective on that as well. Uh, you're correct, Pat, in, in that um, the, the mark-to-market rule which requires financial, well, which requires companies, you're the accountant, <laughs> which requires companies to um, mark their assets to market, um, has, has um, um, complicated the, the uh, situation in one way. Um, when a financial institution uh, has, is making the decision to hold some of its assets to term, then it's not required to mark those assets to market. But when there's a sale involved, the acquiring institution has to mark all of the assets to market. And that has been difficult uh, for two reasons in this environment. First of all, most of these assets have been selling at distressed prices, as, as I mentioned in my comments. Um, but second, as you point out correctly, Pat, the, um, many of these assets aren't trading at all. So knowing what the correct price, how to price those assets has been very, um, very difficult. And, and when there is no market, uh, then to, to, or no market to determine the prices, then you rely on some indices. And in some cases, these, market, these assets have been uh, marked down uh, significantly. So that has complicated the situation. As you mentioned, the SEC has, has, um, has been providing some flexibility to those rules for some institutions. And, and I'm sure that's going to be another area of reform that we look at um, in the future. Uh, and I think you know that's right there on the list. I know from um, from many of the bankers uh, who've who've had to deal with the the um, this issue. So that uh, that is definitely going to be an area that we're going to have to step back and look at the SEC and and, and Congress. Obviously, will have a an important role to play. Mm 